tempts me not to speak of my account, for it's an account for the seas and not the jungle. Annabelle was from St. Lucia. She brought with her island spirit a brand of frivolity that was long forgotten. She had the softest, most beautiful skin. I was a nurse at the hospice. Alas, threatening skies hunkered down by the foremast to my chest. The writings of Herman Melville. He writes of a beast, and it's of that beast I dream. Still your fear, an American cadet's only words to me. He leapt overboard, I was informed, not four hours after our brief exchange, to be forever lost to the North Atlantic. Since her arrival, Annabel slept with three men. William Rush, a man who I affectionately called Billy. Jack Deville, a man who most knew nothing about. And Maurice Serre, a man I was truly and deeply in love with. His father, Philippe Serre, was a trader, and his mother, Alia, was a painter in Bordeaux. Towering in the shadow of smokestacks, the smell of coal. Rending their final strings of sanity, the crew, losing sense of reason, logged of the smell of death and the smell of sorrow. I, of course, didn't have a clue what Maurice looked like. But he had a voice I instantly fell in love with. There was hope. Shores, the outline of sandy beaches, the smell of decay, the marble lighthouse, the captain's log, the first light in months. He was found dead, a single self-inflicted bullet wound to the head. Charles Edmund Jr. was 94 years old. He was a resident at the hospice for two years. The doctors had said that he would only live for a matter of weeks, but old Charlie fought. What he fought for, I don't know. I told Charlie a story once, a story my mother used to tell me. Petrico rising from the foreshore, coal and salt brought from the approaching vessel. I was merely a passenger. Charlie and I talked for many hours. I learnt about his life and he learnt about mine. On the chilly evening that Annabelle and Maurice made love, Charles Edmund Jr. died in his sleep. I heard him breathe and then I heard the silence. A story of the seas that should have been left with the seas. It has no place in the jungle. This is I. And this is I. I can't hear his breath. Maybe it's getting lost in the sounds of the jungle. There are no other sounds. Shh! Hear that? The cool sea breeze. The gentle tide, you can hear it all. You only hear what you want to hear. We are far from open waters. There is no ocean here. Of course there is, you can tell. Breathe in. There's salt in the air. Nothing. You know where the priest went? It seems to me he's left us alone too long. We hardly spoke, he and I. He didn't talk much to the men. 
There were twists and turns in the pathway. We can't make it back on our own. I know. There were rocks and thorns all around. We can't make it back on our own. Do you know where the jungle ends and the shoreline begins? No. At the marble lighthouse. That's the border. That's the border's across. We shall wait here for him. He will return for us. Can you hear it now? The waters? No. We've never come as far as this. Why did he bring us so deep into the jungle? You seem to doubt him. I shall wait. We all wait for something. Sometimes we don't know it. What time is it? I can't tell. Is it daytime? I can't feel the sun. Night time then. I can't feel the moonlight. We were in the eye of a hurricane. The smell of sorrow was inescapable. I knelt down by the foremast and with the pages of a story I was reading, I made this. I know that smell. <coughs> Sorrow. <coughs> Death. Oh my. Why is it? It's him. Where? By my feet. I can't hear him. He isn't breathing. Come over here. What was that? It's him. Can't be. There's no breath. And there's no pulse. I will wait for my ship. Like the wave that crashes upon the rock. Like 
Yeah.